let's take a step back to start with and let's look at the demand that's going on there. The, the population of the world is 7.7 .7 billion today and we're already maxed out in food supply. It's projected to go up to near 10 billion um, in the next 30 years. Um, but it's worse than that because as the uh, emerging economies, more and more people join the middle income bracket, they want to move into cities, they want cars, they want consumer goods, the demand on energy goes up, the demand on luxury food goes up. So the pressure is to, is to actually deliver uh, a lot more for less. So it's efficiency across the whole supply chain, from farm um, right through to the consumer, and the whole use of energy and, and technology through all that, which is going to be key for us uh, in the next 30 years. I remember thinking, I, I went to California a few years ago when there was a drought going on there, and I went to an almond farm, and they had obviously to focus on efficient use of water. And they had a very smart system of essentially tiny, tiny amounts of water overnight, and that was data dependent. So it depended on what the heat had been like during that day, what the heat was gonna be like the next day. That though is a high value crop, almonds. So what about some of the other crops that we need, that we all eat, that perhaps aren't as profitable? Where does the distinction between business and the private side come when it comes to investing in the future of this kind of technology? Yeah, it, it's, it's quite a challenging one. I, I guess the, the, the high value foods, um, and you start with you know, almonds, but you could also look at meats too. You know, when Western consumers are, are buying meats, they're prepared to pay premium. So you can afford to spend uh, and invest in that areas. But the key thing with technology, it's getting lower and lower in cost. Uh, and, and for instance, now we can get sensors for, for tens of pounds, which can sit in a field and can communicate to, directly to the cloud to allow you to decide when to irrigate and when the pressure's dropped and so on. So the cost of that technology is coming down and down. So whilst it might be almonds today, you know, tomorrow it could be corn and wheat crops. So its technology cost is, is coming down dramatically. And does that help develop economies where you have agricultural techniques that might be considered old-fashioned in developed economies, does that help them catch up when it comes to things like crop yield, potentially? Yeah, look, I mean, I, I've been looking at really how much um, food is wasted, you know, and 25% and of the, the, the world's food today is wasted. Mm. Um, in, in somewhere like North America, very little is wasted in the field and production. Most of it is wasted 60% by the consumer. In somewhere like Africa, 70 odd percent is wasted in, in production and in storage and so on. So this is exactly where, as, as technology can be used in those emerging economies, you know, today it's more expensive, but as time moves on, the technology will allow us to get much better yields in, in sub-Saharan Africa, for instance. So when we talk about the shift to technology and incorporating all of this new technology, doesn't that also mean less human capital and less human manual labor going into this industry? Look, yeah, I guess if you look at factories now and across the UK in particular, there are hundreds of manual um, labourers uh, picking products and putting them in containers and then packing those containers into pallets and so on. Um, to be far more efficient in that whole process, uh, today we're using more and more robotics, more automation robotics that can work uh, three shifts, not one, that can pack at twice the speed, that can do it in the right hygiene and the right cleanliness and so on. So, yeah, one for one, the, the robot replaces a person or two people. But, of course, those companies become more productive, they make more money, they employ more, more people doing different jobs. And, and ultimately, you know, we're in a global, we're in a global economy, we're all competing. So if we don't invest uh, in efficient plants, ultimately they'll go out of business. So it's vital that you use technology, even though they displace that manual role today, they bring more jobs in the future. Hi, I'm Giovanna Bersecci and thank you for watching. You can check out more of our videos by clicking on the boxes on the screen. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more from CNBC International. Thank you for watching.